The most obvious damage to unpaved roads happens on the traveled way. After all, it's what we see and drive over every day. And what tends to get the most complaints and attention when it comes to road maintenance? But there's more to assessing and maintaining roads than that. We must be able to look beyond the traveled way to identify the causes of some significant problems and to perform the maintenance that will prevent future damage to the roads and the surrounding environment. In this program, we'll examine some of the common problems that develop beyond the traveled way and the solutions, both short-term and long-term, that may be necessary to correct them. Many short-term solutions, such as traffic control devices to protect drivers and emergency damage control measures, you can begin immediately while longer-term solutions may require more thought and planning and also necessitate the involvement of your supervisor and appropriate specialists. Cut and fill slopes share many of the same problems. Let's begin by taking a look at some of the common problems that develop there, such as gullies, slumps, and cracks. These are signs that the earth is unstable and that the integrity of the slope may be in danger. Gullies, like the ones on this cut slope, are caused by water flowing down the slope from above or from a new spring that may have formed recently. One longer term solution is to look for the source of the water and attempt to divert it to avoid further erosion. However, in the meantime, you can stabilize the gullies with vegetation or riprap. If the gullies are deep, as they are here, document the slope's condition and discuss possible solutions to the problem with your supervisor, including your own recommendations. One cause of fill slope gullies is concentrated water spilling down the slope from the traveled way. This could indicate a damaged or incorrect road template, or a blocked ditch or culvert. Erosion can also be caused by unnecessary berms left on the outside shoulder of the road, concentrating the flow of water onto the fill slope. Another cause of fill slope gullies is water pouring out of the culverts onto exposed soil. This is especially true if the culvert is a shotgun pipe that causes the water to fall several feet before it hits the ground. Installing riprap under a culvert outlet armors the ground and slows or prevents future erosion. To dissipate the flow from the culvert, the riprap should be made of large angular stones not rounded cobbles. Vegetation planted at a culvert outlet can also significantly reduce erosion. For shotgun pipes, a downspout may be the appropriate solution. Avoid discharging water directly into a live stream. While you're looking at culverts, inspect any settling ponds installed at the outlets. These ponds are designed to slow water flow allowing sediment to settle out before water continues on to live streams. Over time, these ponds fill up and lose their effectiveness of trapping sediment and must be cleaned out. All material removed from a settling pond must be deposited at an approved disposal site. Also, keep the elevation of the pond dam below the culvert invert so that it doesn't impede flow through the pipe and cause the culvert to plug. Cracks are a sign that earth in the slope is not stable. Trees tilting down slope are another reliable sign of unstable earth. Carefully examine any cracks you find. If the cracks are small, try to stop the problem at its source by diverting water away from them. Then stabilize the area with native seed. Large cracks may indicate an imminent slump or slide, 
so notify your supervisor immediately. If a slump or slide does occur, place signs or barricades to protect the public until permanent repairs are made. In the meantime, you can try to control the damage by diverting water that may be saturating the road. If the slide is on a cut slope, try to restore drainage on the road by digging a small canal around the toe of the slide so that the traveled way doesn't get saturated. Do this as soon as possible before any material is moved. As you work, be careful to keep your wheels out of ditches containing water. Turning a ditch into mud is not good for the ditch, the road, or the environment. Ditches are designed to accommodate the flow of water during heavy rainfalls or snow melts. One of the most obvious signs that a ditch is failing is water overflowing onto the roadway. This typically occurs due to obstructions in the ditch, such as rocks, sediment, or plant debris. Keep in mind that having vegetation and debris in a ditch slows the water and prevents erosion. So it's beneficial as long as the ditch remains functional. In many cases, the best erosion control treatment is not to clean out the ditch. Ditch cleaning may increase ditch erosion, which may in turn increase stream sedimentation. However, you do need to look for signs that a ditch isn't functioning as it should high water marks on the ditch walls, or debris and erosion across the traveled way, are sure signs that a ditch isn't functioning well during peak flows. If in your judgment there's a sufficient quantity of debris present to impede water flow in the ditch, you'll need to make a decision on whether to pull or heel back the ditch with a grater. A typical repair job may require both techniques. Remember, just as in road surface blading, work only the areas that really need it, leaving the other sections undisturbed, and use a light touch. The most serious kind of ditch erosion is called head cutting. The water seems to cut steps in the floor of the ditch. This problem can only grow worse with time and must be repaired as soon as possible. The solution is to reduce the flow of water to the area affected, installing a cross drain, ditch dam, or ditch relief culvert uphill, or protect the ditch with riprap, rock, or vegetation. Each of these alternatives will slow the flow of water and protect the soil from being swept away. As you continue to check out ditches, look for standing water. If water moves too slowly through a ditch, or not at all, it can permeate and damage the subgrade. The ditch may be blocked by a foreign obstruction. If so, remove it so the water can move freely. If there's no obvious obstruction, the standing water may be caused by a ditch with no grade. A ditch relief culvert or similar structure may be needed to drain the water. If this doesn't work, the ditch may need reconstruction. Another item to check when inspecting a ditch is any sign that water is bypassing a culvert. Clues may include scouring and high water marks directly beyond the culvert inlet. Sometimes this problem can be caused by plugged culverts due to foreign objects, or by accumulation of sediment, or by the water simply missing the culvert inlet. If this is the case, ditch maintenance is needed. Another cause of water missing a culvert is a sediment-filled catch basin. Catch basins are built at culvert inlets to capture water from the ditch and direct it into the pipe. Some may fill up with sediment over time and must be cleaned out to maintain their effectiveness. All sediment you remove must be deposited at an approved disposal site. As you continue to inspect beyond the traveled way, check the condition of the culverts themselves. Water flowing under or around the culvert is a major problem. One solution is to pack clay material under and around the culvert inlet. The culvert 
may eventually need to be replaced. Also check to make sure the culvert is not physically damaged. If you find a pipe that's crushed or damaged, try to fix it. Some techniques used for field repair include hydraulic jacking or gently pulling the damaged area using a small chain attached to heavy equipment. Inspect live stream culverts as well. Many of the solutions to faulty ditch relief culverts also apply here. For instance, check both the inlet and outlet sides of the culvert to make sure it's not plugged with debris. If you must clean it out, don't expand the width of the inlet channel. A narrow channel helps funnel water and debris through quickly so it's less likely to become obstructed. Try to visualize what would happen if the culvert does become plugged. Would the water flow over the road and back into its natural channel? If so, good. But on the other hand, if you believe the water would be diverted down the road, notify your supervisor. Of course, before working in a live stream, make sure you have all necessary permits. Forests are growing, living things. And left to their own devices, they tend to reclaim open areas like unpaved roads. So be constantly alert for vegetation encroaching onto roads, obstructing driver vision and safety. Brush can be removed with the right tools. Some mechanized brush cutters are equipped with chains to beat the brush down. Others use blades to cut the vegetation. Brush can also be removed by hand with equipment like chainsaws and brush whackers. Whichever method is used, cutting the brush is superior to pulling it because the soil remains undisturbed. Roots left in the soil hold it together, reducing chances of erosion and slope failure. Pay special attention to noxious weeds. Invasive plant species pose an increasing threat to native ecosystems, croplands, and other plant communities everywhere. Seeds from these plants are easily spread by road maintenance equipment. It's important to identify these species and notify a botanist if you suspect a new infestation. If you use heavy equipment in these areas, be aware of any special grading procedures and equipment cleaning processes required to prevent further infestation. The problems you encounter repairing and maintaining unpaved roads can be complex. By using your skills and experience to read beyond the traveled way, you can identify the cause and possible solutions to each problem you encounter. When you know what to look for and why, you not only protect other drivers, but you'll also save repair time and maintenance dollars in the long run. And you'll help preserve the road and the environment for years to come.